Starly here today, bringing you four ways that will quickly bring your comics to the next level and look amazing for your audience. I'll be going over several improvement areas, so whether your comic is in black and white or color, and if it's page or scrolling format, many of these apply to all comic types. One of my favorites will be an important tip about colors, and at the end there will also be a super quick bonus tip, so let's jump in. This is the number one most important part of your comic, but I see so many that really lack basic typography. The first important thing to do is to choose the right font. I've seen comics that use all sorts of fonts, but for the vast majority of comics, a standard dialog font will work the best. And we're fortunate that there are a lot of options out there. If you draw manga style like I do, Wild Words is the most used and recognized font for dialogue. The downside of Wild Words is that it is not free. That's okay because you can go to what is in my opinion the best website for comic fonts, blambot.com. Click dialog fonts and everything here will be perfect for your main text. And many of these are free to use for indie comics. There are a lot here, so which ones are actually good? Here's a little online guide, link in the description, that goes over some fonts and shows examples of them so you can get an idea for the feel of it. Your dialog font will be a workhorse font. This means you'll need different styles for it. It's good to pick a font that has regular italics and bold italics options. If you want to simply click on the bold and italics in Clip Studio Paint and think that's sufficient, please do not do this. If bold and italics aren't available for a font, this will give you a fake version and the integrity of the font will be compromised. Use it only if you have to in a rare circumstance, not for your main dialogue font. This is why your main dialogue font will be a workhorse. There are three important design principles for a good panel layout. The first is the grid. Vertical comics do not usually utilize a grid for panels, but the second and third points I'll be going over will apply to them. With a grid, the page is broken up into sections and generally we will have three rows across and two columns down, which will average about six panels per page. From here, you can use this basic grid to break up your page. The second design principle to bring in at this point is hierarchy. What is the most important thing you want to say on your page or when someone is scrolling? Boom, that's your biggest panel. This is why emotional panels and panels showing the big swing in a fight are always drawn large because they are so important and readers will understand how important when they see a panel bigger than all the others. You can also create a rhythm with smaller panels leading up to this big in-your-face panel. When you plan your comic, remember how hierarchy is going to influence your audience's interpretation of the scene. The third design principle is consistency. Your gutters will always remain the same size. Luckily, Clip Studio Paint remembers these settings for you, but I also have them written down just in case it forgets. If you have two panels side by side, the gutter will be thinner because they are part of the same row and will signify the reader to continue reading that way. With the horizontal gutter, this will be the break between rows. There will be a bit more of a disconnect between rows so the spacing is bigger. For a vertical scroll comic, the spacing between panels is generally larger. I like to aim for a square shape so this will allow the reader to focus on each panel as they scroll on their screen. When I convert my pages into scrolling format, I also try to ensure the panel fits within the screen area so readers can see the entire panel all at once. For those who hand draw their comic and scan it in, or take a photo with their phone, you will have to make some edits for it to be presentable. If you use a phone, please find access to a scanner since it will work much better. Your local library may have one or you may be able to buy a cheap one. When you scan your page, you don't have to put down the lid to the scanner. Instead, pile some books on top of it. 
the scanner glass should be able to handle some weight. This is especially important if your paper extends past the glass like mine do. I don't use the whole paper here, but if you do, you may have to scan in two parts and put them together after scanning. The first thing to do after scanning is rotate the page. Drag out some guides here and line them up along the edges of your panels, which of course you made these perfectly straight, right? Or if your paper has rulers on it, you can use the crop marks as well. In Photoshop, go to Image, Image Rotate, Arbitrary, and type in very small numbers such as 0.05 or 0.1 and choose clockwise or counterclockwise. In Clip Studio, use the rotation angle. The lowest it will go is 0.1 though, so it won't be quite as accurate. Now for a black and white page, go to your levels. This is Control L in Photoshop or Edit Tonal Correction, Level Correction in Clip Studio Paint. They both work the same. Take your right arrow and move it left and your left arrow and move it right and this will adjust the black and white values. You want to make sure the whites are very white and the blacks are very black. If you have a hard time seeing, look at your monitor from an angle. I have a laptop so I can just tilt mine up a bit. You may notice there are some really light areas that have suddenly appeared, so then you would move the right arrow more to the left or vice versa for the dark areas. For color pages, you'll want to use curves instead. In Photoshop, it's Control M. In Clip Studio Paint, go to Edit, Tonal Corrections, Tone Curve. Again, these work the same with Photoshop, providing a few more options. You will have to experiment with this a bit, but generally an S shape works well. Depending on your coloring style, this will only do so much, but there are other tools to help. In Photoshop, you can use the Dodge tool, quick key O, set range to highlights and adjust the exposure as needed. You may also need to turn protect tones on or off. Now go over the lighter areas of the drawing. For the dark areas, go to the Burn tool, which is under the Dodge tool. Now set the range to Shadows and go over the darker areas. In Clip Studio, you can use the Soft Airbrush. Set the color to white and Blending Mode to Screen to edit the light areas. For the dark areas, set the color to black and Blending Mode to Black Burn. Same as with black and white pages, view your monitor at an angle to see the subtle areas you may have missed. This is mainly for color comics, but I will also touch on black and white comics here quickly. If you have a comic that uses only black, no grays, you will keep your comic in monotone color, not grayscale. This will ensure your black color is 100% black. When you zoom in to 100%, you will notice the line edges are pixelated. This is why black and white comics need to be a minimum of 600 dpi. If you want to use grays like I do, you can still keep your color as monotone and simply change the layer to gray. This will also make it easier to switch between gray colors and comic tones if you're unsure which you prefer. For color comics, this will depend on if you plan to publish your comic online only or if you will print it too. Either way, I think it's best to start with RGB and just accept when you convert to CMYK that your colors, especially blues, will lose a lot of their vibrancy. In Clip Studio Paint, go to View, Color Profile, Preview Settings. We will choose sRGB here since it's the most compatible across devices and PNG images will save as sRGB. Now go to View, Color Profile, and make sure Preview has a check mark. This signifies the document is now in this color profile. In Photoshop, you have a few options. Go to Image, Mode, and select RGB color. Next, go to View, Proof Setup, and select sRGB. You can also go to Edit, Assign Profile, and see that sRGB is selected here. 
but you can also quickly change profiles with this drop down menu and preview how it would look. You can also choose convert to profile and select sRGB from the list. I could go more into converting to CMYK and color profiles. If you're interested in a tutorial on that, leave a comment and I can make a video about it. This isn't a design principle, so I'm just adding it here as a bonus, but please remember to spell and grammar check. I see so many beautiful comics that would benefit so much by having a proofreader. Here's a website you can use for checking your grammar and spelling. Link in the description. I have been using all of these techniques and design principles for many years, so even when my art was not good, I still had a very clean and legible looking comic. It's been ingrained in me since I was in college, and now I can't unsee these common and easily avoidable mistakes. Have you been making any of these mistakes? Did you learn something new here? If you did, leave a like and a subscribe, and tell me about your own experiences in the comments. And preview how it would look. It doesn't look any fucking different. <laughs>